Welcome to Handy Quilter Watch and Learn. Today we're going to have fun with free motion on the blues quilt. I'm Kim Sandberg, studio educator at Handy Quilter, and with me today is Christina Whitney, studio educator here at Handy Quilter. So we're continuing our journey with this amazing blues quilt, and it's all about free motion today. So what, it is. what block are we quilting? We're going to quilt on this little stripped piece block. Okay. And when I was looking at the block, I was like, oh, I do a lot of strip quilts. Right. And when I do my strip quilts, a lot of times I do them to practice designs. Right. And yeah. so I thought, oh, well, we'll just practice some free motion designs in this. And then I looked at it and I was like, oh. The stripes are going up and down, not sideways. Right. So then I thought, we're going to challenge everybody. Oh, I like it. Okay. So when you're free motion quilting, you don't always get to pick which direction the fabric goes, mm -hmm. at least on a frame mounted machine. On yeah. a stationary machine, you can move that fabric around yeah. to go whatever direction. But on a frame mounted machine, the fabric's there and you've got to make yeah. it work. So I'm going to challenge everybody to try, even if you're not going to stitch something out, grab a piece of paper and doodle these designs with us, yeah. but doodle them up and down, sideways, and then we're even gonna add in some extra challenge later on. I like it. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna pick this first section here. Okay. And I'm gonna do some basic shapes that you can do in any quilt. Right. You can do them in a straight line, you can do them as all overs, just however you want to do good, it. Good, good, basic, classic free motion designs. Yep. Right? Exactly. Okay. okay. So the first one I'm going to start with is a wishbone. Okay. And I'm going to do a lot of wishbone throughout this quilt because I've got some really big blocks that I need to fill. Yeah. So the wishbone, I'm going to start up here and I like to start my wishbone about halfway through my block. Okay. And I'm going to come diagonally and I'm going to loop back up to the top. Mm -hmm. Come down diagonal, loop up to the top, come diagonal, loop to the top. And my diagonals, I'm trying to keep them parallel to each other mm -hmm. as much as I can. Right. You know? Okay, so just continuing that motion. The, the loop at the top, mm -hmm. you can change the size, you can change the shape, yeah. you can do whatever you want with it. But I'm gonna grab that machine yeah. from you. Let's pull this machine over. And we're going to... I'm going to disengage the gears for you. That was You're so welcome. kind of you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread first. Okay. And you are using a blending thread here, using a hundred weight micro quilter. Correct. And I just did a couple little tie off stitches there. Now I am using a blending thread, so the quilting is not going to show super well on camera. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be adding more texture than anything right. else. Right. Okay, I'm actually gonna check my settings to see what I've got going here. I'm at 12 stitches per inch. I'm gonna change it so that the needle will stop in the down position. And I'm in cruise at 200. So I'll leave that for now. Okay. Okay, so I'm halfway. I'm gonna come at a diagonal, loop back up to the top. Loop up to the top, diagonal, loop to the top, diagonal, loop to the top. I always feel like I have to talk to myself when I stitch this to get started because you're looping backwards from you're moving forward in the design and then you move backward in the design. So, yep. And such I'm a great classic design though. Aiming for the edges. Mm -hmm. This is a very forgiving design because mm -hmm. you don't have to make anything touch. Right. This is also a great way to practice using a blending thread on uh, th these strips like this. You can see what you're doing, but when it's all said and done, nobody's going to be like, oh, wow. Hmm. Yep. Okay, I'm a lazy quilter, so I'm just going to go ahead and stitch over to my next section rather than breaking my thread. Right. And this time I'm going to go from the bottom up. Okay. Because, you know, we're going in all different directions. Yeah. Um, so this one, I think I'm going to do kind of like an undulating wave okay. up and down. There's probably a real term for it. So I'm just going to arc up, wave, arc, arc, back and forth. I sound like a seal, arc, arc, arc. <laughs> I should have done can that you... design on our pets episode. <laughs> I was going to say, can you balance a beach ball on your nose while you're doing arc, arc, arc? 
I don't know. I wouldn't <laughs> be able to stitch with my head up. Okay, let's uh, get back to yeah, stitching here. Okay, one. so coming around. The thing that I'm focusing about the most here is trying to keep the spacing between the horizontal lines mm -hmm. as even as I can. Consistency, right? So this is a great design to do with um, a fabric that has like a stripe or something on it that gives mm -hmm. you that line yeah. to follow. Nice little guideline there. Yeah. Not quite what you had there, but you did really good. That looks good. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be perfect when you use a blending thread. That's right. Okay, this one right here. Do you have any requests for me, Kim? Uh, I know that you have a list that you're working off of. Mm, I don't know. What's next on the list? Well, I'm just kind of going out of order. Okay. Let's do E's and L's. E's and L's. Let's e's do and E's and L's. Okay. Ooh. Okay. E's and L's. Okay. Everybody knows how to write in cursive. Yeah. So we're going to draw an E and an L. E and an uh. L. But we're going to do it upside down. E or sideways. L, E, e L. L, E, L. Okay. Or L E L E L E. It's, it's la 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 la. <laughs> Either way. It la, works. La, 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 la. <laughs> okay. Now I do this in some classes that I teach with people doing different letters, and it's so easy to do letters going the direction that you write them. But once yeah. you try to turn them sideways, you oh goodness, it's a whole nother concept. I know. You take that same shape that you know how to form perfectly going left to right, and then you got to hmm, rethink it. Yep. Okay, so what are you going to do next? Well, I was going to add some extra E's coming up. Yeah. But I can't see my original E's and L, so okay. I wouldn't be able to see where I was going. <laughs> I maybe, mean, I, I could draw and there would make some marks where to do it, but... Maybe maybe on another quilt down yeah. the road where you've got a little bit of a contrasting thread that is easier to see, yeah. but yeah, it looks it looks good. That's great. Okay, so writing practice done for today. <laughs> Check. Excellent. What's next? Penmanship. Um, next is going to be my ribbon candy. Okay. So a lot of times with my ribbon candy, I think of like going around a dime or whatever mm -hmm. size I'm wanting. Coming back at an angle, coming around the dime, back at an angle. So this is kind of opposite of the wishbone. Right. Instead of looping back away from where you've been, you're looping away or toward where you're going. Yeah. Did I totally just confuse everybody? Okay. Well, and you don't create a loop either. You don't create a loop. You're not creating a loop, so. Yep, you're just doing a, a, like a half circle, come around, half circle, around. Now with um, ribbon candy, you try to make them match up. Yeah, touch. So some people are scared of them. Yeah. If, if they cross over, it's not going to be the end of the world. No. no if no. they don't touch, it's not the end of the world. Um, some people say, make sure they kiss. Got to make them kiss. Uh, if they do, <laughs> so, great. If they don't, yep. they're just a little shy. It's fine. Yeah. So this one, I'm going to start towards the edge. And I'm just going to do like a half circle around, half circle, come back. Now, to be honest with you, at this point, I have no lights on. I've got blending thread. I've got a big glide foot on. I can't see anything I'm doing. I can see what you're doing. You're actually doing really well, Christina. It looks good. A lot of times when I'm doing stuff like this, I like to change and put on my micro foot. Mm -hmm. It gives me great visibility. Yeah. Especially when you are using that blending thread. It lets you mm -hmm. see right where you're placing that needle so you can be accurate with your stitching. Yep. You can also do um, a handy light mm -hmm. where you clamp it onto the bar and then it shines the light sideways, right. which allows you to be able to see better. Cast a shadow. Yep. Yeah. Looks okay. great though. That looks really good. I like it. All right. So final oh design here. I can't even see it. So I'm pretty sure nobody on camera can see you're it. You're going to have to get your glasses on. <laughs> They'll have to get like a really close lit, lit picture yeah. and insert it when we get all done. Okay. This last one, I'm going to do one-sided feathers. Oh, awesome. Okay. So feathers, a lot of people, they have a really hard time getting their feathers on both sides Consistent. to work. I'm one of those people. <laughs> so we're just going to deal with one side. Okay. So do it on your favorite side, right? Yes. Okay. No, no, we're practicing. Okay, do it on your practicing. bad side. Oh, you're going to make me work on the other side. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what though? It, they both are good if you don't have one good side and one bad side to compare to, right? Exactly. So, okay. I like it. So I'm going to come over just a little bit. And I'm going to do like half a plume. Okay. And I'm going to come back. Now I'm going to use this 
left seam is kind of my spine. Okay. And again, I cannot see where I'm going. And you're doing bump back. And I'm back. doing bump back. Or formal, or I'm trying to think what are all the other terms that people use for these feathers. These are my favorite ones to quilt though too. I love quilting them. I was like, oh, I'm in the quilting zone, auto zone. I'm like, wait, that's a commercial. <laughs> and not for quilting. <laughs> nope. I know what you mean though. Oh, those look so good. So those designs look fantastic. I fun? really love that. And what a fun way to practice those designs. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you did more of this in some other blocks in the quilt. So let's take a look at those. I did. I want to show you how fast I can quilt. Okay. Okay, here we go. Wow, Christina, you can quilt really, really fast. <laughs> I practice. <laughs> Much faster than me. <laughs> All right, now what if you've got the diagonal? You kind of talked about that a little, a little at the beginning of this mm -hmm. video. Um, so how do you deal with diagonals? Well, let's move up to this section of the quilt here. Okay. And I've actually already stitched this okay. with the time lapse, but we can see it. And I have diagonal lines that are going across across this block. Right. And I used that wishbone that we did previously. Oh, look at that. And it was so nice because I could come at a diagonal, which is my diagonal line, right, right. do a loop in this section, come down, loop in this section, diagonal up, loop in that section, loop in this section. So you'll notice the up section is really long. Uh -huh. The down section is really short, but I'm fitting that right. right in that space. That's perfect. What a great way to fill in. Kind of a little bit of an awkward space to fill. Yep. So let's watch the video of that. So one thing that you'll notice as I'm quilting is mm -hmm. that I'm advancing the fabric back and forth quite a bit. You are. This is a really, really large oversized block mm -hmm. and there's actually two of them. And rather than breaking my thread and yeah. then having to restart, I decided it was quicker for me since I've already basted the entire quilt. Yeah. I can move the quilt back and forth as much as I need to. Okay. So I like to do that. Um, I think it's actually faster for me to yeah. advance the fabric than it is doing the, the tie offs and then trying to get things lined up again. Right, right. So, but it's a personal preference. Yeah. Well, I love that too in your double dutch, back and forth, yes. back and forth, back and forth. That's great. Exactly. Well, Christina, I feel like you have shown us how to quilt in every direction. This way, that way, this way, that way. Yeah. Um, a lot of those great basic free motion designs that I, are classic. We see them in so many quilts. It's because they just look so good in mm -hmm. so many quilts. Yep. So I know people are going to ask, you didn't stitch anything in the blue. Yeah. Just wait. It'll be coming. It's, <laughs> she's, she's got plans for that blue down the road. So what are we doing in the next installment in this little series we're working on here with this blues quilt? So this next one that we're gonna be doing mm -hmm. is gonna be super fun. I'm going to create my own digitized design using cool. Pro Stitcher Designer. Awesome. And show some really fun ways to use it and then actually stitch out those blocks that I create. That's great, that's great. All right, we'll be sure and check that out next month when the next episode comes out. For more great quilting content and ideas, be sure to subscribe and give us a like so that you can always know when a new video is premiering. And have fun quilting. Mm -hmm.